Okay, so this week I'm just going to kind of take some time to review a lot of the stuff we've learned about code and this particularly working with this Arduino coding environment. Um, and so the first thing I want to mention is just kind of again with formatting. So we have these braces and these braces happen in two cases. When we have these functions right here when we're basically defining a function which is what is happening with the setup and the loop. These are a definition of a function and the other time we see them is for an if statement okay so if we make an if statement we have braces there too okay notice that you don't see any semicolons okay there's no semicolons at all okay and when I use these braces I'm kind of using them instead of a semicolon okay and so these are the two cases where we use braces for everything else we're using um, we're going to be using some or the semicolon. So, for example, if I want to create a variable, okay, the int again is to tell the computer that the variable I'm creating is a number, and you can call it whatever you want. Okay, you can call it um, Wednesday. You can call it um, I love physics. Probably can't use the, the exclamation point, but um, I mean you could use whatever word you want. All you gotta do is put the semicolon there and then set it equal to something. Okay, and um, one thing that you have to be careful about: you only do this number right here the first time you define the variable. If I want to change the variable, and actually I'm gonna change the name just for the sake of convenience. I like to use I, and I is a common one that we use just to save time. Okay, and so let's do this. Let's, first of all, if we want to make I count up, remember we could do like this. I equals I plus one. Got to have the semicolon. Okay, but another option, instead of all this, we can say I plus plus. This is actually shorthand to count something. Okay. Now let's say that I want to print i, but maybe I only want to print it in certain cases, okay? So then I'm going to put inside this. If I want to print i every time, I put it within the loop, okay? And we'll just print i, okay? And this will print it line after line after line. But if on the other hand I want to print it only in certain cases, then I'm going to move it into this if statement. Okay, and tab it over. Alright, now from here uh, I have to tell it in which cases I want it to print. So maybe I can say if i is less than or equal to a hundred. So this will keep printing i until it gets up to a hundred. Okay, or maybe I'm going to say I equals I plus two. Now it's going to count by twos and it's going to stop when it gets to 100. Okay, or if I want to count down, I could put the minus here. If I want to count down from a thousand, I can have it count down from a thousand. So now what this program is going to do is it's going to keep counting down and down and down from a thousand and then it's not going to show you the number until it gets below 100. And once it does get below 100, it'll keep counting down to zero, then past zero until you fill up the memory of the program. Okay? Maybe we want to add an else. So, in what this is going to do, in all circumstances where i is not less than or equal to zero, we can tell it to do something else. And it can be whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Okay? We can just put some gibberish there. Okay? And so now it's making a decision. So this is a really important piece right here. Doesn't matter necessarily what's inside of it, okay? But anytime you want to make a decision, the best place to start is using if, okay? If is how we make decisions. Okay, to help you kind of understand this, I'm gonna make a little bit of a flow chart. So when you turn the Arduino on, or when you run a program on it, it runs the setup, and then it goes into the loop, okay? And the loop, goes through, completes a set of commands, and starts back over again. And this loop goes on forever and ever and ever. Okay, but sometimes we can say if. 
when we have an if, then it makes a decision. Okay. We'll call these options A and options B. Okay, now in sometimes, in some cases, there is no option B. Okay, so maybe you just have your option A and then go back to our loop. And if whatever the case for A is, if it wasn't true, then we would just continue on. And so we just keep performing the loop. In certain cases that are option A, we do something else before continuing with the loop. Okay, or as I was saying, there could be an option B. And then it would go back into the loop there. Okay, so ifs are very useful, and sometimes you want to make a bunch of decisions. So you can have an if, and get option A or option B. And then from there, you can make another decision, have another if. Okay. And you can make literally an infinitely number, infinite number of decisions here by completing this process over and over and over and over. Okay, and so this is the tool, just the if and the else are really useful tools for making lots of decisions. And while they're very simple tools, they can quickly get do lots and lots of things for you. Okay. So, but make sure you understand the syntax here for if and for else, okay, because these are things that you're going to want to be coming back to, and I'll put them in the kind of the notes that I'm going to put up for the Arduino, but these are important pieces. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a couple other important pieces, and I want you to write down notes about this and get them in a place where you can refer back to them. Okay, within the setup, there's a couple important things we can put here. We can put serial dot begin okay if we want to use the serial monitor we'll talk about reasons for that later okay so this is for to use serial monitor okay and then we can use um, pin mode okay this is another important one we use pin mode to assign pins on the Arduino so use a pin number and then set it to input or output. So we, we have so far just used outputs when we're sending information out to the LEDs to make them blink. But if we want to use something like a sensor or a button, then we use it as an input. Okay. Now let's think about how we might use that. Um, an example of why you might use a sensor is if say you want to see what the lighting level is or and so maybe like you want to set your outdoor lights to come on when it gets dark enough outside to need them well you could have a light sensor and that you would use it as an input and you would take a reading from it and then later use your if statement to make a decision based off it okay so there's pin mode can be used for input or output okay and then the next two pieces we have, so the next piece is digital write, which we use to control a pin, okay? And so what we do here is we put in the pin number, so whatever pin something's hooked up to, and then we can set it to high or low to turn on or off. So set high or low and high equals on low equals off okay and then of course for this we also need to use a semicolon okay and the next thing we can do is we can do digital read okay and this is the opposite of digital write where this one sends a signal out this one reads the signal coming in okay and this is what we would use to see what a sensor is telling us to read an incoming signal okay so in order to use digital write a pin would need to be set to an input and you're going to read what is on the pin 
whatever that pin number is. Okay, and for this one, once you found out what that reading is, you would assign that value to a variable. Okay, so you would take that information in, and then once you took that information, you would take it down here and use it to make a decision. Okay, so when we use digital read, it gives us a 1 or a 0. And based on that information, we can make a lot of decisions. Okay, it's a very simple piece of information. We can actually create really, really complex programs just reading if things are turned on or turned off. Okay. And then finally, if we want to print something, we're going to use serial.println. Okay. And inside you can type what you want to print. Okay, so these are the basics of an Arduino program. These are really all the basics, and they're going to get us going quite. We can do a lot of things with just these things. Okay, later we'll add in other pieces, but there's not a lot of other pieces we're going to add in. Okay, and so your job is to make sure you understand what each of these pieces does. Okay, because that's what's going to help you be able to make some really cool programs.